UK construction industry continues to be a target for organized gangs, with a staggering £70 million worth of plant machinery stolen in 2015. But it's not just small, easy-to-move equipment that's snatched. Thieves will drive off with huge machines, like the telescopic handlers, that can weigh up to 10 tons. To combat this crime wave, companies turn to trackers to try and protect their investments. CanTrack uh, provide tracking equipment for everything from small cars up to large construction equipment, trailers, trucks. And to help protect these machines, like many tracking firms, they recruit highly experienced and specialised ex-police officers. Mick is one of our investigators who is an ex-police officer. We typically look for that within uh, the people that join the investigations team. 30-year retired officer, brings a wealth of experience. He's an ex-CID man, so he's methodical. He's got an eye for detail. And I joined South Yorkshire Police um, in 1983. And then in 2000, I joined the traffic department as it was then. It was through that that I met John. John Mussett is the other member of the team. I was a police officer with South Yorkshire Police for 30 years. The majority of that was working in the traffic department. So I was involved in a small team which South Yorkshire put together, specifically looking at stolen plant machinery. So I had an ideal background, really, to go into the tracking side of things, which I have been doing since I retired. People steal plant machinery for money. They would steal them and export them. They're very valuable. They can get a lot of money for them. During a spate of plant machinery theft, a telescopic handler worth around £70,000 was stolen in the Hampshire area. The machine was fitted with a tracker, so the client called a specialist team into action. The customer rang me um, out of hours, I think it would have been about 8 o'clock in the morning, to report it had gone overnight from a site uh, down in Hampshire. The tracker initially, when we got the call, had given a location on the site, I think the previous evening, and then we heard nothing from it. It, it tries to get on the network every four hours. And on this occasion, unfortunately, we got nothing for days. I think it was off the network for at least a week, maybe 10 days. So we were thinking that it was possible the tracker had been found. These machines, and there was a lot of them, were just disappearing. I think its value was about £68,000, which is a lot of money to anyone. No one knew where they were going, what was happening to them. They were literally disappearing off the face of the earth. So we were just thinking, well, you know, where's it gone? How are we going to hear from it again? And then suddenly the tracker just woke up. It would appear as though it was still on the machine. And the location it was given was in the middle of France, heading eastwards on one of the main motorways. I think it was very clear to us it was on the back of a lorry. We could determine that from the speed uh, and the amount of distance that was, was occurring between the updates that we were receiving from the vehicle. And because of the size of the machine, there's only a few different things that can actually transport that. So whilst it was a surprise to us to see the unit pop up in France, because most of our thefts are dealt with on UK soil, we're very quick to activate and react. As it started to go through Germany, and we realized that it was likely to go to Poland, and if it went to Poland, it was likely to go down and through the Ukraine, which is an established route. Ukraine at that time was involved in, in the civil war, uh, and it was a red line for us. We liaised with the customer. They wanted us to go and find it. With information that we'd got from the Metropolitan Police Plant Unit, we knew that a lot of these machines were heading into Eastern Europe. So we knew we had a race, basically, to try to get somebody out in front of the machine, if we could, to then try and track it and guide the local police onto it. My instructions were to go home and start packing a bag for potentially getting on the first available flight to get out to uh, Poland, because um, this thing was obviously moving. It was a bit of a rush from then on. There's two ways that we could have approached this. So we could have put Mick a long way ahead of the expected route, but if it had diverted into a different route, we would have been really out of position. So we're getting updates that are coming through every now and again. And literally, you blink, and then it's appeared on another part of the map. And you're having to deal with that real-time update of information. 
became quite obvious that it was heading into Poland. So Mick flew out to Warsaw on the Friday, uh, late on, and I was basically doing the back office with him. I was watching where the tracking unit was showing up, contacting Mick on, on his mobile and letting him know where the search area was. I eventually landed in Warsaw at about 8 o'clock at night, found me a hire car, and the first message I got was that it was about an hour and a half south of Warsaw. Unfortunately, by the time he got there, the machine was kind of level with him, was south of Warsaw on, on the motorway near a, a town called um, Radom or Radom. It took me about an hour and a half to get down to Radom, and John had told me that the machine had stopped talking to us again. So we didn't have an up-to-date location in the, in the last hour. Basically, I had to go to where it last spoke to us and said it was, so I, I had a look around, I had an hour searching, trying to pick up a signal from the RF receiver that's in the, in the machine. As the GPS signal had stopped working, they reverted to the radio frequency signal, known as RF. Couldn't find anything, and by this time it's half past 11, at which time I was told, try and find yourself a hotel. So I eventually found a hotel, um, and the night porter didn't speak any English, so we were actually conversing through his computer on in Go Google Translate. Um, so we had to take, he took me to the, uh, to the local cash machine, paid for my room, and managed to get to bed that night, about half past 12, 1 o'clock at night. The next morning, the tracker signal wasn't moving. We kind of guessed that the lorry driver was probably having his break, so we'd anchored the machine. So when it next woke up and came into signal, it would, it would ping an alert. It did that on the Saturday morning to me. I got back in touch with Mick, and the, the machine was about an hour in front of him, heading eastwards towards the Ukraine border. John rung me saying it had switched on and it was driving out of Radom and heading on to, I think it was the E12. So I had to quickly gather all my uh, things together and into the car. And all the time, John's directing me. Whilst I've got uh, the sat-nav, I was put in various locations in as he was telling me where to head. But he, uh, he was also trying to give me some shortcuts because obviously the lorry couldn't take minor rows. Um, it had to follow the main roads. The point where Mick actually caught up with it was, was a really tense time for us. So this unit was getting ping by ping by ping closer to the Ukraine border. Now remember, that's our red line. We don't go there. Uh, we can't safely enter the territory. We wouldn't dream of asking Mick to go in there. So we've got this one opportunity, which is the border between Poland and the Ukraine, and the unit was heading for it minute by minute. We'd made contact with the Met Police, the specialist in plant theft, and they were liaising with the Polish police on our behalf to try and get me some contacts, because obviously, if I find the, or when I find the machine, I'm going to need some help from the police, because if there's people there they need arresting, and just the simple recovery of the machine in itself needs police assistance. When you're working in another country, you can't just pick up the phone and call the local police number. There are channels that we have to work through. There's official uh, and there's unofficial channels that, that, that can be utilised. Uh, and it's, it's logistically very, very difficult. And you need to make sure that you make the right phone call at the right time. John was telling me that on the line, I was getting very, very close to it. So I think I was within four or five minutes of it. And I started picking up a signal. So I knew I was getting close. Obviously, I didn't know what vehicle I was looking for or anything like that. I knew the machine I was looking for, but not what lorry I was looking for. So the adrenaline got going. That was when I was starting to think, well, if I, if I actually find this lorry, um, what, what am I going to do? How am I going to stop it? Am I just going to drive in front of it and try and pull it over or what? And I, I was starting to think, think this could be going to get interesting sort of thing. And I was just getting very, very close when John rung me and said it, the, the information was the pol Polish police had actually stopped a lorry with a machine in. And just as he said that, I came upon these two unmarked police cars parked at the side of the road, and my signalling device was going absolutely berserk. So I pulled up at the side of them, met them. We opened the back of the lorry, and sure enough, in the back of it was this machine. What I didn't realise was we were only 50 kilometres from the Ukraine border. 
and that this machine was actually heading into Ukraine. And I wouldn't have been able to follow it if it had got to Ukraine because my car insurance wouldn't have allowed me to go there. <laughs> um, but thankfully, we got it stopped. This recovery uh, yeah, had a great effect on thefts that were occurring in the North Hampshire, Surrey area. As soon as this one was stopped, it literally put an end to it. We spent over two days playing this game of chess with these guys. They were literally that close to getting over the line and getting away with that, that theft. And we stopped them and pulled them back at the last minute. So the message is loud and clear. You know, you can steal it in the UK, but we will follow you to the ends of the earth to get that kit back. And we did it. Thank you.